Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, or good night from wherever you're watching us on the world, where it's from over Twitter or Twitch or LinkedIn or what am I forgetting? YouTube. YouTube. Uh, yeah. That was it. And as we are Ozen Curious, we are here to talk a little bit to you today about GeoGuessr and about also doing Ozen on events. If you don't know us, if you've just started following us, check our website. We are like a really nice group of friendly people, I would say, that just love Ozen. Uh, I see already some regulars showing up. Say hi in the comments section. If you do are watching us from Twitter or from notice that you can't comment, so maybe shift to any of the other platforms. And on LinkedIn, you may write, we can read it, but we cannot answer to you. There's also a small delay as we're playing GeoGuessr. You will notice that. So sorry if we're not like <laughs> reacting to your comments right immediately, but that does happen. So uh, hi, everyone. I'm going to now introduce myself. My name is Ines Narciso. I'm from Portugal and I'm an Ozint lover, IWN <coughs> underscore LX on Twitter. And I pass it on to our lovely sector. Hi everyone, Sector 035 over here. Ah, welcome. It's been a long time uh, that I was here. Thanks. And yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ginsburg 5150 or Michael James, uh, Ginsburg on, on Twitter and most of the other platforms uh, out in, in the US. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the Kansas City, Missouri area. So yeah. Yeah, without Micah, right? Yeah, it, it is. It is very crazy to have a stream without Micah. He's 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 the rock in regards to a lot of this. But yeah, it's good to good to see everybody and, and good to good to be on. Yeah, hi Adi, hi Doc, Purple Sprout, and yeah, all of those access those in. You are all regulars, and we kind of already know you all. So we're gonna keep an eye on the comment section. Please forgive us already if we're not doing like the amazing job. But Micah has almost like a postdoc on these streams. And look at us kind of like rookies and we're like interns. We're starting on it. So like Griffiths of Rake, if something doesn't go as smoothly, but we are doing it with all our love and enthusiasm. So I guess we're going to start as we always start with a little bit of GeoGuessr. I don't know if you were here yesterday, but apparently... You were were you here Ginsburg yesterday? No, you know? no, I, I wasn't, but I, I saw the news. What was it? 85 country streak, which is crazy. Wow. That's like, amazing. It was, and apparently I wasn't either. Were you here, Sector? No, I wasn't here either. Sorry. <laughs> but Monday I was here and mm -hmm. I left the challenge that the person that would break with their like guess the country streak would have to pay drinks to everyone. So I haven't seen the stream from yesterday, but I'm gonna check up on it on this weekend. And yeah, I'm looking curious to see who was it and who's gonna buy drinks. At least I'm gonna try to get, get mine. Uh, so we're gonna play some GeoGuessr. And if you're new uh, and you don't know the rules, we're basically gonna try to guess where we are and there's like a margin of error the bigger the margin of error the less points we get but we use we do that without going to our computers okay so don't google bing or any anything else don't go to your phone to search for things just use like your brain and what you see and if you have a hint if you have an idea just don't tell us just why you think it, where it is, but also why you think it is like that. So you recognize the writing or because you've seen that before, try to explain as much as you can about your hunches. Okay. And let's do this together. Yeah. Mike had purple sprout. Mike is getting the beers. I think so. Uh, <laughs> I think that's what he went to do <laughs> because it's quite a lot, you know? So yeah, probably that's it. <laughs> So let's do this. Yeah. Um, one thing, um, I didn't have a login code for the OSINT Curious GeoGuessr. So oh, I'm using okay. my personal account, but we're just going to play the daily challenge. So nothing lost over there. Let's hope that doesn't jinx us. I think it's going to give us good luck, Sector. Uh, possibly. Okay. 
Well, it's got some lag in my VM. Great. <laughs> Let's play today's challenge. Oh, you've been challenged? Okay. So, where are we going to land? Whoa. So, well, oh, yeah. the weather is nice. We have highway, the Google car is on the right side. Am I correct? Yep, that was on the right side. And yeah. Oh, looks like something maybe Asian. Yeah, a lot of motorbikes. But yeah. it looks like a highway. I, it almost looks like the highway between Singapore and Malaysia to my own kind of memory yeah. but it may be wrong but i would say can you see the ads on the polls is uh ash king saying and yeah some ones here may be like south america it's also no, saying no, no ads are just numbers they're not really yeah. ads on it nope mm -hmm. it looks like the weather is nice the plants are well, not quite tropical. We haven't seen any palm trees, but definitely from the clothing on the people on the motorbikes, it does look like um, it's nice weather, right? So electric poles. And... Oh, sorry for the amount of lag. I, <clears throat> because it's a daily challenge, I couldn't set up the VM and test it because I would run a, a daily challenge, of course. You would have uh, about prior knowledge, yeah. I, th I think I should have given it like four to six gig of extra memory and maybe two more cores. Gosh, it's slow. Wow. Well, those, those, those signposts do look familiar how they're kind of curved in the, yeah, I, I don't know. And there's like some kind of tower in the up in the front. And what kind yeah. of plants? Yeah. This is like bamboo, I think. Yeah, it does look pan Asian. Uh, I think I think you're on with something in as when it's you're the saying the South Singapore or South. Yeah. yeah, like I always looks at that stuff, but I really don't. I'm I'm, I'm so bad at that. Please forgive us, okay. Doc. The Doc's asking is the is this is the sun north or south? Just to be sure if we're in the southern or northern hemisphere. Okay, let's have uh, a look. We have a truck. Yeah, it looks like we're coming up to some city as well. Yep. Okay. Eight, 18 seconds. Oh, oh. Well, well seen. So you should put the map somewhere. We're going to be suckers at this. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it like somewhere in Asia. There's like characters underneath, like Chinese. Two characters. seconds. Yeah, somewhere, somewhere over there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Not bad. Yeah. That was not bad. I think we at least guessed the continent. Okay. Ah. Oh, it was Taiwan. Okay. <laughs> ah. And bad. that explains what we saw um, regular script and Japanese script, maybe, because like we see here on the top two. So it was kind of slow, like the image showing up, and it slowed us down. But I think we were quite fast, actually. Wow. It's a small, tiny island over there. Yeah. Yeah. With a, such coming? a huge highway. Weird, right? And it did have a lot of, it, I don't know if you noticed, but it did have a lot of um, like barbed wire. So it, it makes a little bit sense that it was somewhere like strategically important, like probably military buildings or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or, now, or maybe if you if you got off the road, there was nothing under it. So they wanted to, to dissuade people from trying to get into the, uh, the thick of it because there, there's just ocean around you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now let's okay. have a look. Play next round. So yeah, the only thing we got us basically to say it was Asia was like the motorbikes, the people on motorbikes that had like an Asian feel, and the like the characters that were clearly an Asian. Yeah, well, Taiwan uses traditional Chinese, says ex the knights. Am I saying that correctly? Hopefully, well. I've got a Peruvian vibe again here. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Shall it we go up? Mountainy. Yeah. Up or down? 
on the right side, are we, or no? Are we, um, yeah, I think, yeah. Sure. <clears throat> I don't know whether I can see it. If we go down, I can't. No, nope, nothing to be seen. Mm. Okay. Now let's go to this highest point, to the curve. There anything to be seen? Oh, there's a building coming up. Yeah, and there's like quarries. Do you see, like the the or kind of like the mountains are. There's clearly like, yeah, that was to build the the road. But I would say I don't know. I'm not sure if it's South America because it looks a little bit too organized. Like oh, here we go. More like maybe European kind of. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sorry for the lag. No worries. Well, we're just playing like slower GeoGuessr. This is yeah. probably a, a new kind of like. It's, it's Friday. You know. Challenge. Yeah. yeah, everyone's going into the weekend relaxed mood. Mm. So. Mountains, the rocks. So they're like all very well what piled. Is, oh, that's a. Uh, I know why like is lights? Yeah. yeah, mist lights, fog lights. Why did they blur what's underneath? It's kind of weird, right? It's not like there's a privacy. But these signs, like these yellow signs for the curve, like they're not, like you can't see them, at least in Portugal, you don't have them. White, yellow road markings. Yeah, well seen, purple sprout. Yeah. Zen GeoGuessr says Doc. <laughs> So today we're going we're doing it like very relaxed. That's right. Very relaxed vibe. Mm. Yeah, I can I can probably uh, change the resolution before the next round. And then yeah, twenty seconds. Speed things yeah, up. Here we should try to guess something. Well, where do we go? South America. I think I, I think so. Yeah, I, yeah, That's I'd say so more in the mountainous region kind of area. Yep. Okay, I'm so going to. Yay! Oh. Well, oh, we're wow. guessing the continents. So you were so, saying Peruvian vibe, and your first feeling was completely accurate sector. So that was so. Cool. First thought, best thought. Let's have yeah, a look. Yeah, Let's... yeah, yeah. And we're getting like we're getting the the continent right. So I guess that's like a good a good thing. So. So I guess we're not we're, we're not doing that well, but so, <laughs> it's not about we, points, in this. Everything is everything's Micah is fun. probably seeing this right now, and he's hey T Diaz, he's probably seeing this now, and he's like laughing, having his margarita somewhere, like you know, in a, in a tropical uh, uh, island, uh, uh, and he's like, you know, these guys suck without me. They're, yeah. like, they're not guessing it at all. They're getting so far. They're all convinced that they were helping me when it was actually the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, well, uh, come and help us. Give us some leads. Yeah, now the screen is a bit messed up. Let's hope oh. it works awesome. when I click next round. Well, if it doesn't, it's not serious because... I'm pretty sure that we can't, we're not, we're, it's not like we're fighting for a first place here, right? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> so for well, every, for anyone who's joining us now, we're trying our best <laughs> to run a live stream here without Micah, which is going pretty well. It's just going a little bit slower. Um, yeah. And we're trying to play GeoGuessr like in a slow mo kind of vibe because um, Sector is is running this into his famous machine, but it's like <clears throat> bumping into some roads, maybe. I, oh, I, yeah. I do love I do love the comments. Have you tried turning it off and on again, Sector? It's uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I, I can absolutely do that. I can absolutely do that. <laughs> Although Fantastic. You, you're, you're joking, but that usually kind of works, right? I mean, how many times have 
all of us, even oh, sure. people who are complete experts and know everything, and they're trying to solve something for like a day, and then suddenly you just turn it off, and then suddenly it's working, and you have no idea what it was. But yeah, you know, when you call tech support and they're like, Have you tried to turn it off? And we're like, Oh, come on, like, I'm an expert, right. like, don't tell me that. Like, of course, like I've tried everything. And then in the end, when you actually do that, it actually works. Yep. So like, that's not how the internet works. And then you're corrected <laughs> because that's, that's exactly how the internet works. So yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> so for anyone who's been joining us, so we're playing GeoGuessr, or at least we were trying to play GeoGuessr and we're sucking at it because it's the internet connection is quite slow. It's not because we don't know because we're brilliant geniuses. It's just like equipment is not helping us. Uh, Doc says, I've had clients. I wanted to do that too. <laughs> Turn the F me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> that, that doesn't work, even though sometimes we would. In the second part of the show, while Sector is trying there to solve like technical issues, we're going to talk a little bit about events. So if you do have any questions about that, maybe you can already kind of write them in the comment box. We will try to answer them. So when you are aware in advance about an event that you're really interested in knowing more about, how can you like plan uh, not only in terms of data collection, but also of OPSEC and what kind of resources is there for collecting uh, OSINT uh, data on a certain event. So maybe you are looking at, for example, a secret meeting of a radical terrorist group, or maybe you're looking, as I was saying today on our Slack channel, to um, like I've I, I, I've had this happening with me, like a mobster wedding, which is really cool because it's like one of those events where people kind of lower their guard and they will forget that like privacy and just put everything online. So like wedding for the mobster wedding, for example, or if you're looking at, for example, a protest that you're thinking that may become violent and how can you kind of go on from that to, um, yeah, to collecting data, to finding data, to plan the collection and everything. So Sector, what do you think? Do you think we will have GeoGuessr or is it just better? Oh, of course. We... Yeah, just, just gave stuff some extra memory and it's now runs on uh, twice as many cores. So it uh, should be like, now it's going to be like a kind of a speedy Gonzalez kind of uh, GeoGuessr. So oh. now it's going to go really, there we go. It, yeah. it should go oh, at God. least a little bit faster. So, okay. So license plate looks Ooh. like it has some blue, or is it my guess? <clears throat> yeah, no. I, like on the, the on the Toyota, right? Yeah. yeah. So it looks like European license plate. Yeah, but it's got and blue on the left and on the right. So it's, yeah, that... you are right. Could be something else. And what does it say here? Yeah, I was looking for the uh, yeah at the uh, the the graffiti in the background and stuff as yep. well. Squat world, I think it says. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have some buildings that are like I would say a little bit old, and yeah, the the Spanish style uh, roof. Okay. Okay. It looks like Spanish. That I would say. Maybe yeah. you can try to look at the the name of the road, the street, Antonio. Sensi. So close. I just moved while zooming I in. I moved a little bit closer. Politico. Politico. Could be Italy. Sensi. Yeah. So Purple Sprout says both on both sides could be Italy. Yeah, I would also say because Sensi looks to me more Italian than actually Spanish. Uh, so <coughs> It looks like it's, what? if it does, if it is Italy, it's probably north, I would say, just because of the kind of the trees. Um, yeah, and the double Z there on the graffiti also looks very much Italian. Yeah, definitely. Via is street in Italian, says Tig Diaz. He's right. Yeah, completely right. 
So we're somewhere. Oh, nice. Yeah, the Tim Italian mobile provider. Yeah. Hey. So we're somewhere in Italy. Probably more up Where? north from the kind of trees. Yeah, it's, yeah and there's and some mountains. hills in, in the uh, in the background. You can see and some hills too. And we have oh, 43 seconds. So let's try to see if we can understand better where we are. Mm, that's a parking. Yeah, but Is maybe it, it maybe says council? what. Yeah. Mm. Sector, yeah. okay. No, nothing. No. <clears throat> so somewhere on the top, I think. We have 15 seconds, so we need to yep. put our pin down. I would say, yeah, somewhere close to Milan so, or something. Yeah. Yes. Somewhere Some, there. Yeah, not too much higher. Oh, no. <laughs> Seven, yeah. six, five, four, three. And Adi two. said it looks like Sicily. Oh, maybe. Way. And Ooh, here Linda a, is saying, uh, oh, my God. Is that, it says, in the graffiti, it says <laughs> Bergamo. It's possible. We did, did we miss that? Is it Bergamo? Could oh, no. be, but Cosenza. Cosenza. Okay. Never heard of it. Never been there. I'm glad that's not with the, I was in curious account. And you're just gonna have that really long score in your own. Oh account. yes, let's ruin sectors account. <laughs> hey, we're, we're we're still we're still pretty close on continent and, and sometimes even on country, you know. So you know, mm, yeah, good. I mean, yeah, I, I guess, I guess, I guess. Yeah. We're not we're not we're not completely sucking at it. Ooh, mm, palm trees. Very pretty, yeah. I'm thinking about like Indonesia or That's something like that. I was thinking as well. Wow, that looks this, nice. This is like Kerala, a, India says Ashking. Linda, we're sorry that I just saw that Ber Bergamo um, comment just right now because it's it's probably like taking like a big time lapse until we can read it. So tuk-tuks, right? Or is that? No, that's, yeah, kind of mm -hmm. like the trailer. And there we have, okay, kind of let on, letters man. we have there. Marlboro crossover. Over three. Mm -hmm. But it looks everything's written in English, right? Oh, Can no. Speak? What is that? That's a P. Okay. P. Someone, um, what denomination of currency has a P? It's is it like a pesos or yeah, good question. And it says per sticks, yeah, it's cigarettes per sticks, so it's, it's per, si per, per cigarette, yeah, mm, interesting. Per, yeah, but it says it in English, right? Peso, yeah, Ashking says peso. But oh, Philippines? Be... Lord Marcus said yeah, Philippines. Yeah, 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 makes sense. Do they have makes... uh, pesos in uh, the Philippines? Urbano store. Makes yeah. sense because Urbano so is man. kind of like Spanish. I think it's Philippines. Yeah, could could you guys could be right. Yeah. Yeah. One Philippines minute. has pesos. Okay, so whereabouts are we then? Mm, somewhere close to a river. With the English and Spanish, yeah, that makes sense. So, okay. and also the kind of people that also kind of adds up to the idea that it may be the Philippines. So, but are we then like more north or maybe more south? I like have no in one idea. Of the islands. But I'll say just like put the pin somewhere, and if we have any idea in the next thirty seconds, we can like kind of. Oh, wow, this house looks pretty neat. Yeah. So I would say like somewhere touristic because of like the the river and okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. We went the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Puerto del Sol. Puerto Puerto Riviera <laughs> Resort. Okay, Puerto so, del Sol. What is it? Mm -hmm. And Punta Riviera where Resort. Should it be? Puerto I del have Sol. no idea. Okay, so where are the tourist people in the Philippines? If anyone, oh, 
We well, were already too late. We ran out of time. So it was more northern, but yeah, yeah it's good. It wasn't that bad. We 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 got the the port of the sun. Yeah, yeah. we got the port of the sun. Yeah. Well, it wasn't that bad. We got the country right, so it wasn't bad. So we got first the palm trees, then we had something in English with a P. And Sector said, okay, what's the P for? Everyone helped, it was like pesos. We saw some Spanish. Actually, the what, what the people were looking at, looking at also kind of like made sense that it was the Philippines. So it all came together for us guessing it was the Philippines and at least we got that one right. And I think we have one less one to go. Yeah, and I hopefully so this one we're going to do like really, really well because it, we're going to just land in front of like middle of Fifth Avenue. <laughs> it's that positive thinking. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Okay. We so have on the, la- the, on the right like a motores para cortinas. Is that port? No, that's not Portuguese. Mm, Maybe no, Brazilian no. then. Or Spanish. Let me see. Yeah, Spanish. Oh. Oh, Definitely oh. Spanish. Go back. And now it goes. I tried to zoom in on two. Okay. Centro Centro. Oh. Yeah. 18 Julio. I would say this could be Spain. I'm not sure about the license plates though, because Spain is zero nine something. The the phones, the the land, the land phones in Spain are zero nine something. So this could be Spain because we had a zero nine four. Uh, okay, a very large the, cross over there. Building, oh. yeah. We have like European license plates, or I think we're in Spain somewhere. I think mm, maybe very not. Very difficult to see. I think no, because a that, hint of M, blue. that that M sticker on the back of that car looks like a movie star sticker. Movie star is a <coughs> is a, a phone company. So that could be else? yeah, maybe South America because that taxi is not Spanish. Okay, somewhere in so oh, radio taxi. Yeah, radio taxi. Can you see what it says? Blah blah. blah it's so mm-hmm. tough. What was that? Pista del Atletismo couldn't read it fully. So Montevideo, Uruguay. Yeah, it could be. Why? Why are you saying there? That's a stadium in Uruguay. But uh, but Pista de Altes. It could be um, ath- athletics course. Or, or, or are you sure, Ash King, that that wasn't what you what you read? So maybe we're on to something. Maybe it is Uruguay. Okay. So let's. We have thirty seconds. Ooh. So, like, if we don't find anything else, we're gonna go with you, Ash King. And if it's not correct, we'll just you know. So we need to go to uh, Mont- Uruguay, in, but where Mont- in Montevideo? Uruguay? Montevideo. Okay. So now we need to try and find a stadium. Uh, Here's the hospital. We did see a hospital there. Mendoza is Argentina. Mm. Look at the back of the bus. Oh, we were right. I I was getting. Oh, wow. I was very well. Very well. Very well. It wasn't thanks to us, it was thanks to Nash King. Right, great tip, and yeah, we ended it up a little bit less. I, I I'm less ashamed of that right oh, now. Shall we check the summary? Yeah, just to oh. feel ashamed. Oh. Yeah, thirteen thousand points. Yeah, but the last one was a really good one. Yeah, so, the last one was a really good one. So awesome. Well done, well done, well done. Thank you everyone for helping us. Oh, yeah, and we for needed all it. Your tips. Yeah, we needed it today. <laughs> we did. It was a good time, though. It was fun. Oh, if you are not familiar with GeoGuessr, GeoGuessr is a really interesting game. It allows you, it has different challenges. We played the daily challenge, which is 
uh, the same for everyone. So it's like five locations and you try to guess it. But there's also like country challenges, which was what we were playing before yesterday. We we, we lost after 85 uh, correct guesses. <clears throat> and you have a lot more. You can focus on a certain continent or a certain place. So it's really it's really cool game. And it kind of gets you into the Ozen mindset, right? In looking yeah. into clues and understanding what's more important and what's characteristic of something or a context. So today we're going to talk a little bit about that and we're going to talk about events and how we plan for them and how we worry about security for that as well and how we collect data, for example. So, hey, Justin. <laughs> so Justin's coming to see the show without Micah. Please don't, don't, don't make fun of us, Justin. We're doing our best. So, Sector, how do you start when you're challenged to collect more data about an event? How do you start? What's your starting point? I, I think it's first really good to know um, what kind of event we're talking about. Um, could be some kind of global event. Could be like, I don't know, um, a, a conflict situation like in, in a war, but it can also be something very local that um, you might be able to get a lot of information from social media. So, yeah, where to start and where to, to aim your errors, so to say. Um, I think that's one of the first things you have to look at because according to that, you are going to see like what platforms do I need to have a look at and, and what's the best way of collecting the evidence. Yeah, so that's a good point. So first of all, try to think about the scope of this event. So is it going to be something that's going to be everywhere on social media, like a big concert or protests or something that you know that a lot of people are going to yeah, post about? Or is it going to be something actually quite closed and restricted to a small number of people. So that would be a great starting point because it also tells you how much you need to think about how you're going to collect that data. Am I good? Is my problem going to be too much data or is it going to be not enough data? Uh, a second thing that I would add to what Sector was saying would be what's your goal? So is it is your goal to know like, what are the people who are going to this event? And I want to know more about these people and what they're discussing or what they're doing at this event. Or is your goal, for example, just to monitor it and understand if there's something wrong? Like, I remember when the Pope came to Portugal, we were monitoring, like, the places that he went because we were worried something would happen, or for example. And so we were looking at social media to understand if there was any situation that we had to look better at. So what about you, Ginsberg? What would you add? What would you worry that, about? Yeah, that's kind of what I was going to say as well, is operational parameters in regards to what you're searching. But then with social media, you know, it's always nice to go through and follow kind of the trending hashtags in regards to specific the details, and then following those back to other platforms as well. So pivoting from one platform to another. So if you're if you're in a more generalized area like Twitter or Facebook, and you can follow it back to like Parler, Gab, Gitter, something else like that or whatever, that may have a, a, a distinct uh, opinion about whatever the event is, whatever. Uh, and, and those places sometimes feel a little safer because they're they're comrades in arms in regards to those 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 specific platforms. So you can get more information. Maybe it's more um, you know avatar detail or telephone numbers, email addresses, things like that or whatever out of that stuff. So, but uh, yeah, there, there's some other stuff. I mean, Snap Maps is a great resource, especially for live events and real-time events. Um, yeah, it, it really does depend upon what your what your plan is and, and what the operational security is for that stuff too. But yeah, there's a there's a lot to be gained from, from oversharing, right? So yeah, that's generally my first my first route. Cool. So you were talking a little bit about platforms, right? And how we need to kind of think about the platforms that we're going to go and search for, depending on the kind of event that it is. So you were talking a, a little bit about Parler, you know, and another uh, types of, of platforms that are more connected to a certain type of audience. And probably for me, for example, for my mobster story, I was re really happy about finding about, you know, there's this platform called weddings.com, for example, where you can like 
organize your wedding and, you know, put the guest list and people can RSVP and they can like say which gift they already bought. And if they eat like they're allergic to nuts and you name it, it will be there. And it's actually really a good Ozen trove. So, so I guess it kind of depends on what kind of event it is. And then you'll start thinking about the platforms. But as you, as you did say, there are some platforms that are always usually always useful like you know facebook instagram like snap snap uh, shap in this case snap maps twitter what kind of tools would you use sector if you would be looking at things in some of these platforms these mainstream platforms um oh that that totally depends on um on what you're actually looking into um there's so many so many things you can uh, look at but yeah there's so many tools and so many platforms and so many things, but yeah, what I, I keep thinking back to what Nico once said, like the best tool is your mind. Try to look for connections, try to look for pivot points. Um, if, if you, for instance, if your research question is try and identify uh, these people that are tied to some kind of event and you just, can't get that p bit of personal information try and look for clues that you can use to pivot to other pieces inf of information that might may eventually lead you to um, enough information to make an identification and yeah. i know that uh, some of the some of the past events you know we may not be as caught up as either the people who are attending or maybe even our clients who are looking to go through and get additional intelligence or actionable information out of this stuff. The one of the really big benefits of, of open source intelligence is we have, you know, PAI, so publicly available information to go through and scan from that may go through and indicate some of the previous uh, either events or um, feelings in regards to those because they are they are documented or published or blogged about, right? So there may be some historical value that we can go through and kind of ascertain from just scanning and doing Google dorking searches and uh, even scraping from some websites to go through and get a, a clear definition of some of the players that may be involved or like you're saying for registrations and stuff like that. I know we have like the knot and we have the wedding and some of the other things out here uh, and then pivoting into maybe some of those social searches. It's a layered approach for some of that stuff, but um, don't over, don't underestimate, I should say the, uh, the historical, um, you know, complexity or, or, or value in, in open source intelligence, because you can get a lot from that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I have to say, um, in the comments, Doc Will makes a really good point. Know the difference between a lead and a rabbit hole that goes nowhere. I've been down and several. I see. Absolutely. I'm not absolutely. good at that, I think. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty good, like... Yeah, I'm pretty good finding places that lead me to nowhere, but I just, you know, I'm I'm kind of stubborn in that. I always feel like some somewhere along the road it will like come to light and sometimes it doesn't. And it's it's something you grow into as well, you know, with the years, you know, to know where to stop and just kind of tell yourself I've just lost a day behind this, but it's okay and it's not giving me anything and I need to start over, but that's not an easy step to yeah. to take. So we were talking clearly about, you know, when you get, uh, when you're interested in an event, thinking about the scale of the event, okay, how big is it going to be, thinking about what your goals are, if it's like, you know, more, if it's just, you know, monitoring, knowing the people that are going to be there. And then we were also talking about how we're going to plan, where we're going to collect that data. It depends on the type of event. And uh and Sector was now in the end also saying how important it is, like how your mind works. So when you're thinking about where am I going to search for this, it has a lot to do with, you know, in your own process to think, okay, this is what I need. Where can I get this information? And sometimes thinking a little bit out of the box. So if it's a, a group of people that like to go hunting, maybe there's a hunting forum, or if there's like a group of professional, I don't know, doctors, maybe you can go to a doctor's kind of association. So there's a lot of things that you can think a little bit outside the box. But usually, like as a starting point, I would use 
as Ginsburg said, hashtags, which are really useful to kind of monitor an event and keywords that are associated either with the location that it's happening or with the group of people or the people are the actors or the agents that are kind of organizing it. So if it's like a hotel, for example, you would probably be looking at, for example, Instagram posts from that hotel location or Facebook videos or photos from that location, or for example, tweets from that location or mentions to that location, because sometimes people will just, you know, post a picture on Facebook and not put the location, but they will comment or put a tag saying, yeah, yesterday at the Ritz Carlton in Barcelona, having a great time with my mates whatever so then facebook for example will probably cut up if you search for keywords so i would uh, add go ahead ginsburg no what well, was me um <laughs> um don't forget <clears throat> that uh, depending on the country um there is a chance that you can just drop a few social media like in africa a lot of people use facebook um, I think it was Brazil or Portuguese. There's also a Portuguese uh, social media website. I forgot what it was called, but um, oh yeah, so or could so there are possibilities to search on a more local level. Just have a look at like what are the most used social media per country, and it it also depends on um, what you're looking into. Um, you, you can, let, let's say um, you're looking at activists, um, you won't find them on something like Flickr discussing their things because that's a photo sharing site. So try and, and try and find out where they might hang out and try and look there for more information. Good tip. Yeah, I, Good tip. I, I will say if you are, if you are looking at something like, during this last couple of years in the U.S., for any monitoring we did for any events that were uh, radicalized or, or, or even, you know, had, had subvertive groups and stuff like that involved, um, putting the date and the time in regards to the, the planned event to see not only when that one event may be happening in that localized region, but also where similar uh, outreach groups are doing it in other geographic locations. And then also looking at the inverse of that, saying what opposition groups are also planning something at the same time, at the same date, at the same address. And then you may be able to go through and get a little bit more physical recon and, and, and looking at some of that stuff. Whatever. So using the, the metadata or the, you know, the information, whatever that's in the, the text of the post or whatever um, can sometimes lead you to other like-minded or, you know, opposition groups as well. So it's, it's good stuff. Good idea. So Sector was reminding us that we need to like context stuff and think about if the event is occurring in a certain culture, a certain community, or in a certain country, as he said, that we need to go also and adapt our planning to collect data, for example, on the platforms. And very often, as Sector was saying, we don't know these platforms in advance because if maybe something we're not familiar with. So if you do know that the event is happening in like three weeks, just go there before, you know, get familiar with it so that when it does happen that you feel more comfortable. And Ginsburg was adding that, you know, think a little bit out of the box. So don't focus on your event only. Try to understand regarding location, date, what's happening at the same place or with the same kind of vibe or the op opposing vibe regarding to your event. Uh, I would add that also an interesting starting point would be service providers. So very often when, for example, we're talking about very secretive kind of private organizations, they will have some security kind of, you know, concerns and privacy awareness. So they will probably not post any pictures and maybe they will not even be on social media for some reason. But very often if, if it's an event involving like a DJ or like in a hotel or if it's involving like a photographer or, or if it has any type of service providers even if it's a security firm you can always try to go through that and try to find through social media through those service providers if they do like the florist you know like oh what a beautiful flor floral arrangement that we did here on you know mobster number three kind of daughter's wedding and there's like all these pictures of the floral arrangements with the people on the table <laughs> 
and you know maybe nobody took their phones or took any pictures but there you have you know the florist showing her proud work so that would be another starting point i see here that doc will is also talking about the use of sock puppets of course this needs to be done you know uh, with all ethical and possible possible concerns because you it's not like legal everywhere as well but it does make you wonder like if you're using either a sock puppet or if you're just you know cruising around social media checking public data what what are these target groups where would you look like not only the actors but also for example as i said service providers or as ginsburg said for example opposing uh, people, or as Sector was was saying, for example, looking at other social media platforms or things a little bit out of the box in all, about the normal grid. So always try to plan that in advance because the more you get to know kind of like the environment, like the ecosystem of your event, the more that in the day itself you can collect data. And this because as we've seen, more and more people are starting to share, for example, stories and other types of multimedia content that if you're not there at the moment, it's going to be, it's going to be, yeah, it's not going to be there tomorrow. So what would you think about this? How would you plan to collect, for example, like social media content that would just, you know, disappear in a couple of hours? So I, I know that uh, during some of our monitoring uh, sessions, there were closed Instagram live stories, you know, like where they went live on Instagram as a platform, but it was uh, invite only or it was um, <clears throat> it was private to a certain group. And generally it was uh, it was people that, that were known uh, and it was it was tough to go through and kind of get even with sock puppet accounts into this into this group. Uh, there were a lot of people that were because it was a, it was a massive kind of organization. And so what they would do is for the people that weren't able to go through and make the meetings, they would rebroadcast some of that stuff on Twitch or on uh, YouTube. So they were very low rank accounts, you know, maybe had like 15, 20 followers. But the 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 search terms in regards to that plus facial recognition and some of that stuff worked to go through, and identify um, streams that were recorded or archived kind of after the fact. So some of that really does help if you can go through and be a little bit more as Justin Sykes uh, really should and, and likes to put it, be tenacious in regards to your searching and, and and don't really give up for that stuff, which is still one of the best quotes ever about OSIT. But yeah, um, you know, there, there are ways to go through and get around some of the time stuff. Uh, but if you have the opportunity to go through and put a sock puppet in that account and you can get notifications in real time, that's, a, that, that's an amazing, amazing feat as well. Sector, do you have anything to add? No, um, he, he, he worded it perfectly. Yeah, the, the best thing is to be prepared, and especially if you ha get some notice in advance, you know exactly what kind of uh, tools you may have to set up. But yeah, like uh, like Ginsburg said, if it is if it's uh, like an invite only stream, yeah, you just have to uh, be lucky. But yeah, keep on looking because there's. Something that goes around on the internet normally doesn't stay hidden that well. Exactly. You just, you just have to know where to search. Announcements are another good thing, um, especially for like newspapers and articles and stuff like that. If there is a social event, um, they will announce it a month in advance because they want that lead time for people to go through and kind of gawk and fall over, right? So if it is in regards to a wedding, which are usually high stake affairs, even in, uh, I know some of the Russian weddings for some of the APT or the ransomware actors that we tried to go through and do attribution for, where we're at least monitor, right? Guys doing donuts in the streets with Lamborghinis that are all colored, different color. You know, there were some weddings that were just obnoxious, you know, spent 10 to $13 million for a specific wedding. Those people want that out in the open. They want that to be flaunted. And that's perfect because we want to go through and see it, right? Uh, so at that point, however, it's one of those things where if you can set up Google alerts or something extremely basic like yeah. that, just to go through and pull that 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 10,000 foot level view of something, then, uh, then, then it makes sense. I know we have a question also. Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing it here uh, by Claire. So Claire is asking, have you any advice for senior investigations officers on how best to task OSIN staff or how to get the best out of you? 
Um, yeah. Oh, good question, Claire. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, so I, I can give some. I can give some advice on that. Please. I can give some advice on that. Um, if if you got some OSINT staff and uh, they need to do some work, make sure that your research questions are clear. Fantastic. Don't advice. don't go and like just go just find anything you can or everything you can. No, just make sure that you have your research questions um, ready that you need certain things to answer or whether you're looking for a specific type of proof or maybe if if it's for a journalism debunking could be enough um, make sure that the research questions are clear um, are not impossible and do give them some time um, because Sometimes time is of the essence, but yeah, make sure that if you have a nearly impossible task, that they do get enough time to do it. I would I would personally add that it's really important to know their qualities and you know try to understand regarding not only like technical qualities but also like pr work process qualities. So in my team what I would think is like I need someone who's really persistent you know really persistent that doesn't quit because I knew it was going to be frustrating or if you need someone to be very thorough you know sometimes you have those people who are so thorough they don't miss like a dot and it kind of depends so it, it's really important not only to think about like the technical skills but also if you do have a specific task to think about the kind of person because we all have different qualities that will make, you know, that, that, that will adjust better to that kind of task. That would be my advice. Yeah. Totally agree on that. Totally agree on that. Yeah. Really good advice and really good question. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great question. So we're wrapping it up here, but uh, as we finish this idea about events as well, and we were talking about Insta stories and, you know, Facebook stories and how this has been growing as an OSINT area, I would say as well that if you have time to plan, one of the most amazing things that you can try is build lists of profiles that you want, that are open and that you want to follow. So even if you're not, you know, uh, if you're not going into a more offensive kind of thing that, you know, we can discuss if it's OZIN or not. But if you're just looking at like public Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook accounts, you know, if you have like the service providers or the people that, for example, work in that if, a hotel or that space or that, you know, conference room and you have their Instagrams or their Facebooks and you have the Instagrams or the Facebook accounts of the people that some people that you know that are going to be in the event, you know, and that are more open about social media. If you have all of that, you know, in some type of bookmarks or you can use like, you know, we have Justin on board, you can use Hunchly. If you have all of that organized, then in the day itself, it's much easier to just, you know, okay, I'm going to check all these profiles and I'm pretty sure that of these 50 or 100 Instagram accounts, someone's going to make a story about, you know, about our meeting, about this really important meeting that you want to grab something about. Or so it's, it's especially when it's like a more closed environment event, I would say that if you can plan ahead to find the people that can give you like visual support uh, is really important in advance because it will be there. That story will be there that day. And if you're not onto it, it's not like four days later that you're going to find it. Right. People will think less about stories that they do think about a post because they know that will stay there in their timeline. But, you know, you've had a couple of drinks and, you know, oh, I'm looking so nice. And there it goes. You know, it's a split second. Next day it's gone. If you have it, it's good for you. And this leads into something we were going to talk about, but I think we're kind of running out of time with Inez's talk at layer eight with the genealogy stuff. Uh, and this isn't specific to genealogy, but even when you're doing your, your pre-assessment, if you have specific profiles that maybe they have private settings or they don't have any settings, uh, you know, they don't have an account on major social media, um, finding the second and third degree, you know, either relationships, relatives, things like that, that do have those platforms accessible, um, monitoring those. I know that we have done 
so much good work, whatever, going through every single picture and finding that piece of gold, you know, that that really ties that person that you're looking for, the person that you have access to and another person or X, whatever it is. Right. Um, so it, it can be very manual for that stuff. And you can use other tools like in Saluter and Facebook uh, graph search when it works. Right. Um, but there's a lot of discoverability around those second and tertiary people that, that are associated with them. So um, people search engines are huge help. Family tree now. Um, other other sites like the, the ancestry and the genealogy, those, uh, th those are great to go through and get a wider perspective of that one single target there. So keep that in mind as well, because we, we've, we've made some awesome discoveries in regards to that stuff. And, and also go check out Inez's talk because it's, it's really good. Oh, thank you, Ginsburg. So I talked on the Layer 8 conference uh, last yep, week yep. about your genealogy and how we can use gene genealogy as a resource to like start pivoting on those in investigations. And what Ginsburg was saying that's really important that we kind of acknowledge is, you know, everyone, every community or every network has a weaker link. You know, and and we want to find we want to find that weaker weaker link in terms of you know privacy concerns and 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 we always have that person in our family just just overshare. who overshares <laughs> everything right all the people at the holidays they they videotape and photograph everything you know they they tell you what their menu is from morning to night and it's like okay we don't need to see your bagel thank you well you know. in that case I'm going to highlight a comment from Adi he's absolutely right. People yep. share more as time passes. They need to share and brag. Great for evidence finding. And it's 100%. absolutely yeah. true. It's amazing. Yeah. I've, I've, I've given talks about uh, like awareness in awareness week, like how easy it is to find victims to rob houses because they share that they are currently on a holiday. But if you scroll down into their Instagram page, you just find their backyard and just just a few pictures before that you see the front door. So it's so easy to find an easy target. It's it's amazing. You are right. You are right. So, well, everyone, we're running out of time. With our hour is closing. Uh, we're so glad that you could join us and that you could give us some love and support here. Since uh, Micah's not here, and you know, it, it we're all kind of in the learning process here, and that you stuck with us um, and for your help, not only on GeoGuessr but your questions, your comments and all of your input um yeah so today we did geoguesser and we talked a little bit about events and we gave you guys some clues on what we would consider to be most important i think you have a lot of good starting points if you do have an investigation like this you know go through this again and just take some no notes and think how it can apply to your case uh, in my case, thank you very much, everyone. And I'm going to pass it on to Sector and Ginsberg to say goodbye. Well, before we close off, I've got one more thing to say. Something that hasn't been talked about yet. Um, before um, you start an investigation, if you act on information that has been sent by a third party, make sure to verify it i speak from experience because you can just end up in a completely different country with someone who might be treated as a suspect and has nothing to do with anything so make sure to verify things and then have an awesome job running your investigation it's been a pleasure thank you for being here thank you for the awesome questions everyone um I'm Sector 035. Next Monday, my uh, week in OSINT is out again. Um, it's so useful. I use oh, it so every awesome. week. If you yeah. want to start, go to go to Sector's week in OSINT. Thank you very much. Yep. Gins. I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, check up uh, Ginsburg 5150 on, on Twitter. Um, you know, do the stuff on LinkedIn. Uh, if you're in the Kansas City area, you know, let, look me up. I'm, we have some some local meetings that we're doing, but we'll be we'll be doing some more next year as well. Uh, so I think that's going to kind of do it for us. And uh, again, as we always kind of close it out, however, I think it's uh, it, it's time to go through and say our, our patented catchphrase, isn't it? Yeah, we're gonna try to do this right because we want to like finish with a bang. So like, yes, one, two, three, okay? Okay. So one.
Stay, Stay ocean, ocean curious. curious. Not bad.